Hi guys, okay, now we're moving on to our final topic. We are now looking at agri-food fibre and fuel technologies. So I gave out these booklets in class, but if you Google agri-food fibre and fuel technologies answer guide, I'll put a hyperlink here, it will take us to the answers to this. Okay, so supporting document answer guide, and you get this PDF that goes through everything that we went through and there's a little bit more detail in there as well for some of the answers that we maybe should add to our notes. Um, but I'm going to go through this again, okay, the main points and just ensure that we're 100% comfortable with what the content for this elective, okay? So you can Google that, it's Agri, Food, Fibre and Fuel Technologies Answer Guide. If you Google that, this will come up and it's the same booklet that we gave out and all the answers are in there as well. So it's a pretty good resource. So, I said it in the last video, um, download the Master Ag Notes from the Facebook page if you haven't already. Uh, they use different examples from us, but it's always better to have more examples to use for the exam. So I'm gonna use their notes as well uh, to supplement what we've already looked at in class. So, I'm going to just very briefly go over these important definitions in case you missed it again. Um, hopefully this is not brand new information, but just to remind you, um, when we're talking about the biotech stuff, we are talking a lot about bioengineering um, and manipulating, manipulating DNA. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, a long co complex molecule that consists of nucleotide bases that are arranged in a particular sequence that form the instructions for making proteins usually contained within the nucleus of the cell. A gene is a portion of DNA that codes for the production of a molecule, which is usually a protein too. They are expressed when they are used for the production of something. That's important because we can now manipulate genes. We can turn them on, turn them off, and produce something in the organism that we want that's desirable. A genetically modified organism then, or a GMO, is an organism with genetic material that has been altered by genetic engineering, sometimes referred to as a transgenic organism. A gene marker, a gene which allows scientists to find the cells that have taken up, sorry, I'll move that little mouse, have taken up and incorporated a gene for a desirable trait. Genetic engineering, also referred to as gene technology, is the ability to manipulate, modify and transfer genes. And protein synthesis then, the process by which proteins are made. Protein is a type of polymer that carries out the essential chemical functions for life, e.g. building proteins, controlling chemical reactions, making structures and controlling the expression of genes. So essentially, if you can manipulate an organism to produce a certain type of protein, that protein will tell that organism to do something. So if you can do that and you understand what that gene or that protein does, then we can start to manipulate organisms to do what we want them to do. So this is basically this whole topic is about bioengineering or gene genetic engineering. So biotechnology, um, just another definition. Biotechnology has the potential for improving the efficiency and the production of processes in creating foods, fiber, and fuels. It also has the potential to improve sustainability by implementing natural processes to create desired products. For example, biofuels to reduce reliance on fossil fuels, and biotechnology allows for the development of techniques and products that are not otherwise possible to benefit humans. For example, genetic engineering to produce varieties of plants that are resistant to disease. So we've already talked about this with the Bogard cotton. However, advancements in biotechnology, particularly in regard to genetic engineering, have led to ethical debates. For example, gene patenting and manipulation. Some people call it playing God. There are also concerns for the biosecurity of biotechnological inv uh, investigations and with limited long-term testing, there are fears that such advan advancements may adversely impact our health in the long run. 
For example, unknown impact of ingesting a GMO food. Okay. So some of the things that we've looked at, um, at the top there we have the EnviroPig. I'm not sure why my mouse isn't working, hang on. There we go. So we have looked at the EnviroPig, um, which we'll discuss in more detail. Um, embryo splitting, and we looked at um, why would it be beneficial for somebody to know, this is separate, but why would it be uh, beneficial for somebody to know the sex of the animal or manipulate the sex? We talked about reducing the number of male dairy cows, for example, that were produced. Uh, biofuels, um, we have algae here, which I'll talk in more detail. We talked about ethanol as well being produced from other um, kind of vegetable oils. And this is what a biomarker is. So it's a part of the DNA that we know there's genes either side of this, and we can use that to then look at that area and maybe turn on or turn off the genes in that region. So I'm going to talk about these again in more detail. One of the things we need to do when we talked about ethical reasons there um, is labelling of GMOs. So in agricultural production, food safety is highly valued as the food products we will be used, sorry, will be used by the consumers. Unsafe food, such as those containing toxins or hormones, can have an adverse effect on consumer health. For example, organ failure in some extreme cases. GMO food is still a fairly new biotechnology development with little research on the long-term health effects of consumption. While current evidence does not suggest GMOs are completely safe, it doesn't strongly support otherwise, so we just don't have evidence either way. It is thus important that GMO foods are labelled as it will enable, cons enable consumers to make informed choices, especially for those who choose to purchase non-GMO food in fear of the potential health risks. So we talked about this at length in class two. So contrast the two categories for GMO labelling could be a question you're given. So the two categories differ as the first requires the consumer notification to be included in the list of ingredients, like in these photographs, and the second category requires the notice be placed elsewhere in the package in a conspicuous area, so usually on the front or somewhere that is more visible than just in the ingredient section. So there's two places, okay? On the front, somewhere conspicuous, so that means that it's easy to see, and it has to be included in the list of ingredients. It has to be genetically modified, or has to say genetically modified. So there's a, a bunch of issues with GMOs, um, pros and cons, like anything in life. And it's highly likely you may be asked what, what are the issues related to GMO foods. So the pros of GMO foods could be potential increase in nutritional value of food, which could equal to health benefits for the consumer, improved quality of life. And we'll talk about that in a little second, particularly with um, some of the, the cows that are producing these um, necessary chemicals that we may use uh, for young babies. Potential to increase yields, reduce chemical use by having resistance to pests and disease and improving fish efficiency, the use of resources such as water, which could lead to greater profits. So we looked at Bogard again, um, need to limits the use of chemicals. Expand range of food varieties, new markets and niches. Appeal to consumers with longer shelf life and aesthetics. Potential for improving environmental sustainability. Appeal to industry reliant on byproducts from ag, such as pharmaceuticals, biofuel industry, and convenience and efficiency of processes. The cons then of GMO food production. We have limited knowledge of the effects of GMO on health and effects on environment. The risk of contaminating non-GM foods, reduced market options and competitiveness for non-GM farmers, which could lose their income. So they could maybe patent like the Bogard cotton, that becomes the, the variety of choice and then they have a monopoly on that. Escape of genes into the environment, which could create super weeds. So we're, we're changing the genes, but then what happens after that, we don't have much control. Potential for increased environmental exploitation, so there could be increased chemical use due to convenience, accelerated chemical resistance of pests. So there's a bit of a double-edged sword there that we may use more chemicals because we know that the plant's resistant to the chemicals and then that has a knock-on effect on other things in the environment. Ethics of DNA manipulation and patenting DNA. So can you legally copyright a DNA strand? Monopolization on GMO foods have kind of spoke about that already and the potential for GMO to exacerbate allergies 
or connection to illnesses. So there, there's potential for that because we don't know the long-term um, health effects on GMOs because they haven't been around long enough. So another question, highly likely, examine regulations that surround the development and use of GMO technology. So regulations surrounding the use of GMOs ensure that the application and the use of such biotechnologies will not breach will not be a breach to biosecurity. For example, before a GMO food is released onto the market for consumers, it is required to undergo trials and have an evaluation made on the results of those trials. There's some legislation that we need to know about. We talked about the Food Standards Australia New Zealand, FSANZ. Um, there's a Commonwealth level legislation across the whole country, so the Gene Technology Act, GTA 2000, and GTR 2001. Number two, list the five national regulatory bodies. So the main one we have discussed is Food Standards Australia New Zealand, FSANZ. These ones may be good to take note of as well. Um, Therapeutic Goods Administration, Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Authority, the National Industrial Chemicals and Assessment Scheme, and the OGTR. So these are all the people that are involved in making sure that the, the safety uh, of the consumer is protected. Okay, pause it here, guys. Review your notes. I would go back and uh, ensure that you've got any, any information that maybe isn't uh, right there in your brain. Make sure it is by the end of this video.